So I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm reading from verse 23 to verse 25. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope which we profess, for he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how we may spare one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. There are a couple of themes that come out in this passage. Uh, there is this one theme of continuing to meet together. Uh, the writer encourages this particular community to never give up meeting together. But it goes on to say something else. It says to them, spare one another towards love and good deeds. In other words, encourage one another, push one another towards doing these things. And then he says to them, encourage one another. And so we might want to ask, why is it important for him to mention these three words? Meeting together, sparing one another, encouraging one another. I think it, 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 you might find it interesting to know that this particular congregation or this community, which is called Hebrews, is actually a new community of faith. And the people who were likely to be recipients of this letter would have been second generation Christians. And so the Christian faith is something that is new to them. But this was also a community that was undergoing fierce persecution. In other words, life was not normal for them. They had opposition from the Jewish authorities, they had oppositions from the Romans, and so they were being attacked from all angles and from all sides. And so this writer says to them within their situation that they must encourage one another, they must not give up meeting. And so this has been one of the things that I've been thinking about to say to me, what does it mean to be church uh, during this time? Uh, and I know our current series is trying to address that. But I think it's an ongoing question that we should be asking ourselves. And part of the agenda today, we'll try to address that as well as we talk about how do we express community, how do we express uh, being this body uh, that continues to meet, uh, even if we do not meet uh, all together physically in one place? What does it mean for us to continue to meet within the context uh, of social distancing and all of those things? And some of, uh, some of the people have come up with very creative ways to say how we can continue to meet during this time. And I just want to, to drop this thought as we begin tonight's meeting to say, let us not uh, stop meeting, uh, whatever meeting might mean, whether it is coffee and care before the service, whether it is Zoom meetings, whether it is uh, home group meetings that will be happening. But let us find ways uh, to use all these channels to give expression to this uh, Christian gift of holy conferencing. Uh, Mr. Wesley would have said something along the sides of attending upon the, the ordinances of God. And so the question is then what does it mean to keep on attending upon all the ordinances of God within this particular context? I think whatever the response we might have or whatever answer we might have, all of us who have benefited from the gift of meeting with other Christians and fellow believers every Sunday morning or every Sunday evening. We know the gift that comes with just meeting together with people who share the same beliefs as us. Uh, we understand the gift of meeting together within home groups where the question is asked, how goes it with your soul? And we respond to that question by just pouring our hearts out. And so I think the writer of Hebrews speaks uh, to us as much as he spoke to that particular community when he says, continue meeting, spare one another, encourage each other, 
And I pray that this meeting will be one of those platforms where together as the leadership team of Westview, we can begin or continue to think and process together what does it mean for us to continue to live as a community of faith within our current situations. And so with those words, I would like to invite us to pray. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Parent, most loving and gracious God, once again, we thank you. We thank you this evening for the gift of life. We thank you for this community, which is called Westview. We thank you for this leadership team that is called the Leaders Meeting. And as we come together uh, in this way, in a manner that we have never come together before, we know, we trust, and we believe that you are amongst us and that you are with us. And so, Lord, we just want to pray that you might breathe life into our conversations so that as we converse with one another, we might also be able to hear something of you. We pray that as we consider plans for the next few months, that you will continue to lead and to inspire us. And so, Lord, we pray for all who are members and all who are represented by this leadership team, that at this moment, as we consider decisions, that we are just mindful of the fact that the few of us who are meeting tonight represent the many who are not part of this meeting. We pray for all of these in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Ian. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sapiwe, for leading us in that devotion, which has helped to point us in the right direction right at the start of our meeting. Friends, I want to apologize for the lateness of sending out the agenda to you. Um, I, it only went out uh, two hours ago um, into your email. And so uh, if you haven't checked your email in the last two hours, you might want to go there. But I am going to um, I am going to uh, share screen the agenda for you right now, and so you will be able to uh, see what our agenda is for tonight. So Sapiwe has led us in devotions. I think we've taken the attendance register. Uh, are there any other apologies that we just that Lael just needs to record that you bring to the meeting? Ian, I've had apologies from Pete Vessels and Antoinette Perkins. Um, sorry, there was a third one, but I'll email my apologies from my cluster to Lael. Thanks. It might have been Barbara Girdleston. I know she emailed apologies to me. Was Barbara Girdleston the third one? I actually think she was the fourth one, yes. Okay, yeah. Um, but there is someone else, but I'll email Lael. Okay. Um, I've, also, I've also got Jane Dupree uh, um, apology. Okay, thanks. So Jane Dupree, thanks. Okay, so um, we move now to agenda check. And what I want to ask when we uh, is that we broaden the scope of the agenda check. And I want to just take a, a few minutes now to just capture the questions that you have come to tonight's meeting with. So inevitably we are moving into a, an unknown phase in the church's life. And so I'm sure that you have come to tonight's meeting with some questions. And um, what I'd like to do is just capture those questions and we're not going to answer them now, but at the end of our meeting, we will return to those questions and just check that all of them have been answered. And if there are any that are unanswered, then we will address them. So could I invite you um, just to uh, speak out uh, any questions that you have? Um, uh, so that we can capture them at the start of this meeting. And the questions will also help uh, me to gauge and the rest of the leaders, uh, the, the exec, to gauge where the also where the congregation is at. What are the questions that the broader leadership body and congregation are asking at this time? 
So any questions that you would hope would be answered at tonight's meeting? Uh, Ian Dionio. Yeah. Um, my question is whether the efforts by the Gauteng government to centralize the distribution of food parcels is impacting on our own efforts uh, via the Chehu, or maybe I should change that to negatively impacting. Um, if the answer is no, then that's it. If the answer is yes, then whether the church somewhere or other can make its voice heard about this matter. Okay. Thanks, Dion. So I've just written it up there, and perhaps if I could ask um, a leader to just note that question and to speak to it when she has a chance to bring a report. Great question. Thank you. Ian, yeah, this is Jeff. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I don't know whether it's appropriate to talk about here, but obviously, you know, money's going to be tight. Mm. And you know, my, my concern would be we have a number of members of staff uh, who are reliant on income uh, from our society. Um, and also we need to be paying circuit and district assessments. Um, and have, have we or do we plan to do any impact study on that? And is there any guidance from um, MCO and other districts? Been trying to figure out what's going to happen in the district, but um, I don't know whether any overall um, assurances or plans have come that we need to take uh, note of as a leaders' meeting this evening. Okay, thanks for that, Jeff. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I will I will speak to that. Uh, whatever Avril doesn't cover in the finance and admin report. Uh, I will I will speak to that one. Avril will be able to answer parts of that, but not all of it. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? Okay, yeah, Ian, uh, it's it's uh, Adrian. Yeah. Um, just to, just in terms of the property, um, it's on the agenda. What are, what are we able to do with it currently? Are we able to maintain it in any way? You know, before we left the building, did we turn off all the geysers? And um, is there anything that can be done while we're not there? Or will you cover that under under eight point one under property? Okay, well, perhaps if Josh can address that under property, and uh, and if you can just remind us uh, when Josh does his report, just to make sure that we've covered um, we've covered that question. Thanks, Adrian. Okay, if, if there are no further questions, then um, please, uh, at, at any point during the meeting, if it's a report or something somebody is reporting uh, um, sparks a question for you, please do just uh, feel free to ask it at the time, and we'll give an opportunity again at the end of the meeting. Um, so let's return to the agenda there, which you have, and just ask if there is anything that you wish to add to the agenda under general and we can add it now. <clears throat> okay, then uh, we're going to move to the minutes of the previous meeting, and I'm going to be cheeky enough to um, assume that people have read it, even though you only received it a couple of hours ago. It will take us a little bit of time to read through the minutes. So could I ask if there, if anybody has picked up any corrections that need to be made um, to the minutes of the last meeting, which were, was held in uh, uh, in um, uh, on the twelfth of March?
If there are no corrections, then uh, is there somebody who has had the chance to read them and would be willing to propose the adoption of these minutes? Okay, so Nico has uh, proposed the adoption of the minutes. Thanks, Nico. Um, is there anybody to second the adoption of the minutes? Okay, we will second it, Ian. Thank you very much, Adrian. And again, apologies for getting them to you at short notice. Uh, it's not the way I like to operate, but things have just been a little crazy the last 48 hours. Okay, um, are there any matters arising from the minutes? Uh, and there are some matters arising that will be covered under item eight. So I'm gonna ask that uh, unless there's a mat something that you see in the agenda that you don't think will be covered by items 8.1 through to 8.11, um, uh, that you raise it. Otherwise, let's just cover the various issues when we get to that different cluster uh, report. Okay, then moving on to the uh, a presentation that I'd just like to share with you about the remainder of um, 2020. And um, I, I guess uh, about two weeks ago, um, I really felt that it was really important that we have some kind of structure to decide as a congregation and as a leadership team um, some kind of framework in which we could, which could guide us in thinking about what we should give our energies to in the season, what we should focus on, how we can check whether all of the bases that are being covered as a congregation are being covered. And so uh, after much thought and praying through it, I, I, I started with the question of uh, asking myself um, what, uh, let me just see what's happening here. Uh, asking the question, um, uh, what is our vision for Westview during all stages of lockdown? And, um, and the phrase which guided me in my thinking here is the one which said, we will hope for the best, but we will plan for the worst. What that means is that we hope that, uh, that South Africa is going to be effective in, in um, in, in, in slowing the curve uh, and in treating and in controlling the spread of the virus so that we will be able to go to ever lower stages of lockdown. But uh, that, that's our hope and our prayer. But I believe, we believe that it's prudent for us to plan for the worst. Now, if you looked at the presentation that uh, uh, the document that accompanied President Ramaphosa's presentation when he announced the five stages of lockdown, very clear from that document that social gatherings and, and religious gatherings, uh, there will be restrictions on them through all five stages of lockdown. So what that means is that uh, we are not going to be meeting certainly in large worship gatherings or services, but probably even smaller meetings for, for months. And so in terms of the guidance, the, the, the strategy to plan for the worst, we are planning as if we will be doing online church for the remainder of 2020. So that means that if things start to open up again by September, as what most people seem to be predicting, then that will be a pleasant surprise. But if, uh, if things are even worse than that and we are shut down until December, we are prepared for that. And we, uh, and, and we are going ahead with all of our planning on the assumption that, uh, that this is gonna be reality for the next eight months. So what that means is that all of the plans that we're putting in place are not just stopgap measures until we can get back to how things were. They're not normal measures that we are, are they, they, not, they, they are, are the new normal that we need to work out for the next um, eight months. And that is the, the, the guiding um, uh, time frame that we are working on. So the next thing I thought about uh, is I asked myself the question, what, um, 
what are the congregational needs during this time? Um, and if we are to remain a place where life change happens, which is what Westview is all about, then what needs do we need to be ensuring are addressed? And I, I articulated these needs in five phrases, which a congregation might speak. Some of these phrases came out of some of the phone conversations I had with congregation members early on in lockdown. Um, and the first phrase <laughs> is the phrase, I feel cared for. So this is a time of tremendous stress and anxiety for many people. And one of the key things that Westview needs to attend to, and by Westview, you'll see that I've underlined that term we. By Westview, I'm not talking about the pastoral team, and I'm not talking about the staff team, and I'm not talking about the, the exec. Uh, I'm talking about the entire leaders meeting. So that means every single one of you, uh, as, as a leadership team, we must address these five needs if, uh, if Westview is to be faithful to our call to be a place where life change happens. So the first one is that people in our congregation need to feel cared for during a time of tremendous stress. That's one of the bases that must be covered in whatever we do. Then secondly, people need to feel connected and they need to feel that they are in community. So, um, so this is a time of physical isolation. The people, we all have a human need to be connected to one another. So we really got to be intentional at every level of Westview's life of making sure that people are feeling connected feeling that they are part of a community, that they are not alone. Then the third need that we all have is the need to make an impact. And it was amazing how we got feedback from ushers and from money counters and from members of worship bands saying, I'm so missing the service that I was offering to God through Westview. What can I do? And that speaks to the fact that as human beings, we all have a need to feel that we are making an impact for Christ, for the gospel. Uh, whether we're making an impact to the church community or whether we're making an impact to the broader world, change people, change in our world. We all have a need to make an impact. And fourthly, there's the need for spiritual growth. Uh, I, we all need to be transformed into Christ-likeness. And, and it's very clear that we can't just put that on hold for the next six months because if you're not a growing Christian, you're a dying Christian. That's the reality. And so we need to continue to provide opportunities for the members of our congregation to continue to grow spiritually and to be transformed into Christ-likeness. Uh, that's what changed people is about in our mission. And then finally, there is the, uh, there is the need to, that we all have to, to be surrendered to God. That the words of that covenant prayer, I'm no longer my own but yours. Uh, it's about living a life of worshiping God and of glorifying God in all that we are. That's how we have been wired. And so we all have that need as well. So those are five needs that, that I felt that, um, that we as a congregation needed to, uh, that the congregation has, and that we, we need to make sure that whatever our strategy is, we are addressing those needs of the congregation. Um, flowing out of that, my mind went to a, a Venn diagram, which has three different circles. And uh, I'll try and uh, orientate you to the Venn diagram. And the first circle um, I've called pastoral care and fellowship. And, uh, and, and the pastoral care and fellowship circle addresses the need that the congregation has to be cared for and to feel connected. Um, the second circle, try and ignore the parts of the diagram that I'm not speaking to until I get to them. But the second circle is, um, is the spiritual formation, discipleship, evangelism circle. And that addresses the phrase, I am being transformed into Christ-likeness, or I'm growing spiritually. Um, and that's so important that we address that. Then the third circle is mission and outreach, the need that we, the congregation has to make an impact for Jesus. And, uh, and that's the third circle. Uh, and those circles overlapping uh, in the middle create uh, the area of worship. And this is in white because worship encompasses um, everything. Sorry, Ian. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't think you are showing the it's Venn diagram at the moment. We still see um, the. We still, sorry, my wife's at home group at the moment. Um, we're still just seeing the. Uh, um, man, the agenda. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh, my word. Uh, like other people. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay. I, thought, I thought it was just me, and then I saw some comments in the comment section saying that. Okay, let me try and. Um, okay, let me go to share screen and choose that diagram. Thank you for that. Okay, so all along. Sorry, uh, is, is it showing now? Yeah, just very zoomed in. <laughs> very zoomed in. Yeah, it was yeah. intended to be zoomed in because I've been scrolling around. Okay, so that means that you didn't see all the, the questions being typed up. There they are up there. Did you see the questions now? Perfect, yeah. Okay. And then uh, you didn't see the um, you didn't see the five statements, the five congregational needs we must address. And then there is the first circle of pastoral care and fellowship. Uh, there is the second circle of um, evangelism, spiritual formation, and discipleship. And there is the third circle of mission and outreach. And then here in the middle, which is where I got when, uh, thanks, Josh. Unfortunately, in share screen, I can't seem to see the comments. So if you type a comment, I don't think I'm going to see it. Um, you're going to have to just interrupt me as Josh did. But um, in the middle there, white is all of the different colors. Worship is, is at the heart of who we are as a church. And that addresses the need to be surrendered to community, to surrender to God, sorry, and to be in community. And then, of course, there's areas where, um, uh, let me make the circle, the diagram smaller now. Um, then there are areas where pastoral care and fellowship uh, overlaps with mission and outreach. And there are areas of this diagram where um, evangelism and spiritual formation overlaps with pastoral care and fellowship, and also where spiritual formation overlaps with mission and outreach. So if you can see this Venn diagram, you can see that obviously the white in the middle is the worship services, which are very central to what we're doing now, online worship. These are This list is not exhaustive but it lists some of the activities. Under pastoral care and fellowship, there's the Kaluma um, online counseling, and there's food parcels for the congregation. But past, where pastoral care overlaps with mission and outreach, we have the phone calls that are being made by congregation members and staff. We have food packs, which, uh, which uh, fulfill both pastoral care and mission and outreach needs. We have the support network. Now, I want to stop right there and say that putting that phrase support network acknowledges that a lot of the um, need to make an impact and to connect people and care for them is not being done by the staff, but it's been done by the networks of groups and relationships within the congregation. And that's where you as leaders come in. That whatever group you are leading, whether it be the LTPC or, or uh, the WA or a home group or um, the Friendship Club, uh, whatever, uh, or, or worship band, whatever group you are, are heading up, uh, part of your calling at this time and part of your priority at this time should be to be the support to those people within that group. And so that we are all looking out for each other during this time. Is the Zoom prayer meeting and the prayer letters and WhatsApps. Moving across to where pastoral care and fellowship overlap, uh, overlap with evangelism and spiritual formation. We've got the Zoom home groups and disciple groups that are meeting. We've got um, the treehouse and greenhouse videos that uh, Josh and children's ministry are producing. And then... Um, uh, we've got daily devotions here, mission and outreach, there's the Tsejo, there's the face mask production and food donations. And then Westview College is really an expression of both mission and outreach, but also spiritual formation of the community. So this diagram perhaps will be helpful for you. 
and uh, I will um, email it out with the minutes. But as you think about what your role is as a leader, I want to encourage you to think about this diagram and think, okay, as a leader, um, how can I participate in ensuring that the people I lead are experiencing fellowship, they're feeling connected, they're feeling cared for, and how can I make sure that the people that I lead are, um, are still growing in Christ um, and being discipled? How can I make sure that the people that I lead aren't feeling that they've got nothing to offer, that there's nothing that they can do to help? And how can I ensure that the people that I lead are still involved in worship and are experiencing community and being surrendered to God? So let me just pause there, and I do apologize for the false start with sharing this. Um, I'm still becoming familiar with some of the um, functionalities on Zoom. Let me just pause and ask if there are any questions or observations based on this Venn diagram. Ian, I, I would say just just the mere shape of the you know the the circles. It's it, it shows completeness. It shows um, wholesomeness, if we can call it that. And it's the you know the overlapping points. Um, it's yeah. If we were to describe it in one word, it's it's wholesome and complete. It's not one word, but that's what I see from it. Yeah? Okay, thanks for that, Adrian. Yeah. Okay, um, so um, perhaps that's an that's a image you just want to have in your mind as we move forward and, and as you think about your role as a leader going forward. Right, now what we're going to move on to now is um, uh, just to return to our agenda is um, the, uh, the role of the leaders in the coffee and care time that we are launching this coming Sunday. So if you've been participating in online worship, you will have seen us advertising coffee and care. It's also advertised on the WhatsApp channel. And one of the things we've realized is that uh, when we gather for worship on a Sunday, a key part of our gathering is the conversations that happen in little circles out on the lawns, on the terrace, with the parking lot either before a worship service or after a worship service. Uh, in, in fact, that's what some people look forward to most when they come to church on a Sunday. And so we asked ourselves, well, how can we recreate that through online worship? And the idea we came up with is to say, well, what if we set aside the 15 minutes before 8.30, in other words, 8.15 to 8.30, and we asked every leader in our leaders meeting to ensure that the team that they are leading, uh, if they are leading a team, that the team or that they're leading or the home group that they're leading, whatever it is, whatever group it is that they're leading, that you create some forum for those people to just care together. They can make themselves a cup of coffee or tea and sit up in bed or even sit in, the, in the, their living rooms or at the kitchen table and just chat with each other and find out how they are doing. So for those of you who um, have been part of the Zoom Bible studies, um, sometimes the richest time of those Bible studies has been the five minutes before we formally start our study, where we're just asking everybody how they, we are doing and finding out how people have been enjoying the walks in the mornings, find out how it's going with homeschooling of kids, particularly ask people who live alone how it's going. And there's different ways, there's different forums that these can happen. Uh, you could set up a Zoom or a Teams or a house party meeting and uh, invite people to participate in that. For those who have data limitations or are technologically not that strong, um, WhatsApp groups where you can either just type greetings to each other or send voice messages to and fro between each other. That seems to be working well with the Friendship uh, Club. And um, uh, there may be other forums that people could use just to connect with each other. 
So that's really what we're asking you to play a role in. Now, as a leader, you might be a leader of a, a home group or a Sunday school class, perhaps, and you're saying to yourself, well, I'm not technologically savvy to make that happen myself, but uh, maybe you aren't, but maybe, um, but maybe there's somebody else in your group that is. You could take responsibility for being the host uh, or for being the convener of that forum. So I'm going to stop there and just ask whether any of you have questions about this and, um, and whether you have any suggestions for how we could enrich this time. And, um, and I've come out of screen share now. So if you want to type, I will be able to see what you type. And, um, and let's just have a conversation around how we can just create spaces for people to feel connected during the coffee K and K time on a Sunday morning. Ian, um, Zoom, as you can see, it's, it's probably one of the better platforms. Uh, I think on you know, WhatsApp, I don't know how good the, the conference function works on WhatsApp. Um, there's, there's, there's other methods you can use just by telephone if you, if you want to phone in to, to create your own um, conference. But obviously, you don't, you don't see people then. Um, so Telcom also have a, an option that you can do that. But I think Zoom um, is good. The, the, the problem with Zoom is not everybody has a computer or a laptop. Uh, some, some people don't have a smartphone. Uh, yeah, some people don't have a smartphone. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's various options. And I suppose for, for home groups that are lucky enough to all have computers or smartphones and tablets and so on, Zoom would probably be one of the better options. The, the Telcom one is is a conference facility that you just, you can set up yourself. The problem is everybody pays for their own call. So it's not a toll free number, unfortunately, you know? Um, so if you don't have data on your phone and you don't have airtime, that becomes a problem. So yeah, WhatsApp, WhatsApp is, is probably very good just for a WhatsApp group. If you're on a home group, you could, you could have a separate uh, WhatsApp if you want. Uh, we, we've got two, we've got a sort of a prayer journal that we, we have press out every day on that. And then we got the, the, the sort of the home group, you know? Um, but yeah, for this type of thing, yeah, if you want to get a lot of people together, I think Zoom can probably handle about 400, 400 people, I think I, I can confirm mm -hmm. that. But you can get a lot of people on. And, you know, the good thing is everybody can see it, their, their, their faces if, they, if, if they've got the capability and they can share. Um, yeah, it won't be, it won't be a service, obviously, but it, it it'll be nice for everybody to to get together. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks, Adrian. So what we what we've decided is that we we thought to ourselves that every leader of a group in the church, they know their group best. So you will know whether your group is uh, has Zoom, has a smartphone, whether they are tech savvy uh, or not, whether they have data restrictions or not. Uh, and so what we're asking is for each leader um, or the host of each group uh, to decide which platform to use. So we're not going to prescribe to any group what forum you use. We just want to cast the vision of setting aside 8.15 to 8.30 every Sunday morning for us to care with each other before the worship service starts. And then we're asking you as a leader or the host that you appoint in your group to, um, to, uh, to uh, decide on the nuts and bolts of how you are going to implement the vision for your group. Okay, uh, but there are some helpful suggestions there. So um, for example, there are a lot of the retired people in our congregation, uh, they say we don't have, um, uncapped data, we only have cell phones. So they say in WhatsApp voice notes uh, is the way that we are finding most helpful. But we're gonna leave it to each. We'll obviously provide guidance and assistance to anybody who asks, but we, we just wanna cast the vision and then ask you to work out the details and, to, um, to, uh, and, and then to implement it. And then the last thing we're asking is for you to give feedback as to how it's going 
so that we are able to just have a track of how many little payer groups there are happening, and that will be important for us. So if we could ask you to please um, uh, give that, that feedback, and uh, you can, I'm trying to think what the best way, who the best person to send that to would be. Uh, you can actually use the Westview um, WhatsApp channel. And you can just drop a WhatsApp to um, Nicola, who administers that channel, and she will be able to track then um, uh, which groups are meeting. So I see Greta posting that the EWA already started this. So they, uh, women always find an excuse to talk, she says. <laughs> and so this is already happening with the WA. That's wonderful. Elise is pointing out that Facebook also allows group calls. So are you, are you up for this, uh, leaders? Are you committed to making this happen? And, uh, and just to provide a space for people to fellowship on a Sunday morning. Okay, thanks. I'm seeing some thumbs up. Um, so uh, Deirdre is saying yes, and, uh, and Elisa is saying yes. So let's try and honor this. Um, uh, it means setting your alarm clock 15 minutes early on a Sunday, but I really think it's going to be a wonderful blessing to people who do it. Just to say to the staff members as well, that if you can work together with the volunteers in your cluster and also be open if there is the need for you to host Kair uh, Kranga, uh, Kair Circles uh, in your own clusters as well, that would be wonderful. Okay, any other, anything else to say on that item? Right, let's return to our agenda now, and we're going to move into the, uh, a brief summary of the plans for the remainder of 2020. I'm gonna deviate from the order now because uh, James has got a Zoom Young Adults Fellowship Group starting in 10 minutes time. And so I'm gonna ask James to go first, and so we'll start with 8.3 and 8.4. And if James can just bring us an update on what um, youth and young adults ministry uh, is looking like for the rest of this year and what spiritual formation is looking like for the rest of this year. So over to you, James. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Ian. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so I'll start just by talking about uh, youth and young adults a bit. Um, so with the initial lockdown, um, we decided to take the strategy of just reaching out to a lot of the youth and a lot of the young adults. Um, there was quite a bit of panic and unsurety in the, in the first week or so of lockdown. Uh, so there was a lot of informal chats, uh, checking in with people, uh, a lot of partial care happening over WhatsApp and phone calls, et cetera. Um, but after the initial lockdown period, once things started to settle in um, and the panic started to calm down a bit, uh, there, was, there was a little bit of a lull. Um, you know, people started to get bored at home and so on. Um, and so we tried a number of different things during this time. So we were releasing daily devotions for the youth. Um, again, uh, over WhatsApp. Uh, on WhatsApp, we have a number of different groups. So there's a confirmation group, there's a rooted youth um, a Sunday morning group, there's a post confirmation group, and then there's a bunch of different young adults uh, WhatsApp groups as well. Um, so we're releasing a daily devotion, uh, which some were using, but not too many. Uh, so then we decided to go a little bit more of an informal route. Um, so we we started. Um, kind of like a gamers group because quite a lot of the youth are gamers. Uh, so we picked basically a game and uh, we were just playing that on some afternoons, just chatting, sharing together, uh, spending some time. Uh, we did that with some of the young adults as well. Um, and it just created a nice opportunity for sharing and just connecting, touching base in a little bit more of an informal way. Um, we hadn't, as the youth leadership, um, made any major decisions um, leading up to the extension of lockdown. And then once lockdown was extended, we kind of just continued with how things were going. But then once the announcement was made, um, 
around the alert levels and so on, uh, all of the, the different youth leadership groups met and um, we've decided as a way forward. So we met with all of the this year's confirmation class. So we're going to be continuing with confirmation online on Sunday afternoons. Uh, so that's going to be going forward almost as normal from this coming Sunday afternoon. Uh, we're moving on to the Youth Alpha series with them. So we're going to be doing that for a number of weeks. Um, then the Sunday morning youth, uh, rooted youth, uh, we've decided to actually try running youth, uh, not on a Sunday morning, but we're going to be moving it to a, a Friday evening. Uh, part of this was uh, some of the youth leaders themselves uh, suggested that Friday might be a little bit more of a convenient time, uh, as a lot of the youth, um, you know, they're busy on, uh, during the week with school, a lot of them are up early. Uh, so the consensus was that some of them would choose to sleep in over the weekend. So if we were to do youth at 10, quite a lot of them wouldn't actually be there. Uh, so we're gonna be trying a Friday night youth group. Uh, we're going to be experimenting with a number of different things, uh, making it uh, open for pretty much anyone who wants to join. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of fun, a little bit of worship, and then uh, some kind of message that we can include uh, for all of the youth, um, just to try and ensure that there's some kind of spiritual input for them. Um, so right now, that's that's what the main youth group is looking like. Uh, regarding the young adults, um, uh, both of the, the current young adults home groups have been meeting uh, with their home groups uh, since pretty much the beginning of April, plus minus. Um, and those groups have been running, like, again, as normal as possible. Um, and there's been just a lot of conversation uh, amongst all of the young adults. Um, I guess going forward with the young adults, we would probably look at uh, group events that can be done. Um, some ideas have, have kind of been thrown around, something like a watch party where you pick a movie or a TV show and everybody you stream it and then a whole bunch of people watch it together um, just as means of fellowship. Um, so that's pretty much what the young adults and the youth are looking like. Uh, Ian, should I pause there in case anybody has any questions or comments? Yeah, let's, let's just yeah, let's just pause before we move on to spiritual formation and just ask if there are any questions to James regarding youth and young adults. Okay, if there are no questions, James, you can carry on with spiritual formation. Okay, cool. Uh, regarding spiritual formation, uh, this has been uh, tricky for, for some of the, the groups in some ways. So uh, with Disciple, um, only one group is currently meeting over Zoom. So that's Disciple 1. And they uh, started a little probably the middle of April. So they've been meeting over Zoom now for about two, three weeks. Uh, so they actually have, they busy with Disciple now, which is pretty awesome. Um, my understanding is that uh, Thomas's group has been continuing their reading um, and they've been communicating with each other via WhatsApp and email. And then um, Doug Monday's group and Jane Dupree's group are currently on hold. Uh, I imagine that there, there might be further discussion for them. Um, uh, we haven't actually had that check-in conversation as yet to see what the plan may be for them going forward. Because um, uh, my understanding is that meeting virtually uh, for these groups has been a little bit tricky. Uh, so we're gonna have to look into that. Um, then regarding home groups, uh, we had our first home group leaders meeting this afternoon. Uh, with some of the home group leaders um, just to check in. And one of the main feedbacks from the this meeting was that if we could just keep communication channels open and to ensure that there's a lot of information sharing with resources. Um, so pretty much a message is going to be going out tomorrow to all home group leaders uh, with a whole bunch of links um, that the different home groups have been using as a resource because uh, some groups follow the church's um, 
when there is home group material uh, and some of the home groups use the daily devotions uh, but other groups also choose to use their own material so that's how the home groups are looking uh, general feedback is that some groups have been meeting over zoom successfully but there are other groups that have had um, some difficulties which have been shared already in this meeting such as uh, lack of technology computers uh, internet connectivity etc uh, so the meeting just brainstormed a number of different ways that uh, the different groups can try and maintain um, this fellowship and uh, going forward um, another thing that was done was the walking with westview clips um, which was just kind of a uh, I guess initiative you can say that was done to give the congregation a little bit uh, of spiritual input. Uh, this was uh, released during the initial lockdown period uh, and there has been conversation of what that could look like going forward um, in terms of a, a constant resource that the church may offer. Uh, I imagine that along with that there, there may be talk of some kind of webinar that the church can host or online uh, I guess you could say course that people can join kind of like the courses that we ran in March. Uh, the, a similar kind of course could be hosted easily over Zoom. Of course, not everyone would be able to join, um, but it is something that we can definitely look into. Because um, myself and a number of other, uh, I guess all of us have attended some kind of webinar um, at some point. Um, and so if we could use that idea or that model going forward, I think we could make use of it. Uh, and yeah, that's that's spiritual formation. Okay, thank you very much, James. Um, uh, yeah, A any questions to James before he leaves on spiritual formation? Okay, thanks, James. Enjoy your fellowship group and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Good night. Right, so we're going to go back up to 8.1 and just by way of introduction to let the meeting know that, um, that uh, Josh will be leaving the staff team at the end of May. Uh, many of you will know that Josh has been studying uh, while he's been on staff at Westview. He's been studying to qualify as a maths teacher and he received a post at Sutherland High School starting the 1st of June teaching maths. And so, um, yeah, it's going to be a big loss to our staff team and to children's ministry. And uh, Josh uh, has been a great, great blessing to us as a staff team, but also to uh, to the children in our congregation, many of whom are now in youth uh, over a long period of time, but also to the children of uh, Westview College and other local schools in our area. So Josh, we're delighted that you and Claire are still going to be a part of Westview as uh, congregation members. And uh, we just want to say thank you for your contribution to children's ministry. We really do appreciate it. And uh, we will be saying farewell as a staff team to Josh towards the end of May. Then, um, just to say that in the light of the financial uncertainty uh, around the lockdown and the pandemic, um, we have made the decision to freeze Josh's post um, until, um, uh, until there's greater clarity about the future. And, uh, and there have been extensive handover conversations and plans with Josh in the three areas that he is responsible for, which is uh, children's ministry and uh, property and uh, new members integration. So, um, Josh, uh, I'm going to hand over to you now um, just to bring uh, your reports. Cool. Um, thanks, Ian. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think I'll, I'll start as property. Um, I don't have the agenda in front of me, but uh, I'll just start as property. And uh, just to answer, I think it was Adrian's question right in the beginning in terms of what is happening um, with property at the moment. Um, just before lockdown happened, we we kind of, uh, we switched off all the geezers on the property. We switched off um, 
all the fridges and open them up, um, clean them out and open them up, um, and any sort of appliance that was, uh, you know, that, that does draw a lot of power. So pretty much the only sort of electricity that is being used currently on the property is kind of outside light. And whenever I suppose anyone goes into the office to, to, to do anything, because I know Kaluma quite often um, goes into going to go and use that. So that's pretty much that for, um, for the electricity um, and, and that stuff that we have done. Uh, we uh, once a week I've been going into the property just to check if everything if everything is alright. Um, and um, we were thinking uh, there was a thinking around that we can do at least once a week some sort of essential maintenance that needs to happen. So since all the leaves are falling down, for instance, like it fills up all the gutters and the gutters are completely full. And if it rains, then you know water kind of you know goes into all sorts of places and gets damaged. Um, and like a lawn needs to be cut or something. So they, so we're looking into doing some sort of just once a week, um, you know, a ne a necessary maintenance um, for the next couple of weeks until you know, things start easing up. Um, but that's uh, that's that from um, from uh, from a property sort of standpoint. And then just checking if there's any water leaks or um, you know bathroom things that need to be <laughs> checked out since there's not many people on site to actually see if any of these things are happening. Um, but yeah, so that's that for property. Um, property will be handed over when, when I finish, she'll be handed over to Avril. Um, she, she did do it before me. So I know she, I know she knows, ex she knows exactly what she's doing when she, she'll be taking it over. So, um, yeah, so, uh, some of the property will be, ha property will be handled by, by Avril. Um, even though Sue and, and Corbis and them are extremely involved uh, when it comes to the property, like the LTPC and, and all sorts of other things. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much property. Um, I'll pause if there's any questions uh, or actually any um, suggestions <laughs> in this lockdown, I suppose, um, when it comes to property in the next couple of months or, or weeks. Uh, Josh, I did mention to you before, but maybe um, Sue and them should be aware that uh, the sanctuary is leaking. When I, I think the day before we went into lockdown, we were filming worship services in the sanctuary and there was quite a big storm and right. water was pouring in. So just a reminder to the LTPC. It was it was the, the water that was pouring in by those, the, gla the um, stained glass window stained glass windows, hey, or the, the colored windows. Yeah, there, but there was also a leak in the sanctuary and also one in the foyer, and then also the um, Garden of Remembrance. Yeah, so, so when you say by the, the colored windows, it's by the um, windows which face the parking area, uh, the, south, the south side of the church, that tiled right. walkway area was flooded quite badly. Sorry, Nicola, can you just, um, I don't know if you remember the one that was leaking in the sanctuary. Do you know exactly where it was leaking? Just so we can just pinpoint it. Um, I, put a, I put a bucket there. So if you go in and you find the, bu the two buckets, oh, right. you'll find okay. one in the sanctuary and one in the foyer. Okay, perhaps we won't get into a detailed discussion on that, but if um, Sue and, and Josh and Nicola can just correspond and pinpoint what the problem is and then at least we know what it is for when the time comes to address it. Okay, thanks um, Ian. Uh, we'll connect in with Nicola and Josh and see how we're going to sort it out and, and uh, get back to you guys. Thank you. Okay, um, any other questions or suggestions for Josh? Right, let's move on then to um, pastoral care and uh, I'll hand over to uh, Lael now. Children's Ministry. Oh, sorry, Children's <laughs> Ministry, yes. Sorry, Josh, yes, go for it. No worries. Um, so what, what we are currently doing for Children's Ministry, um, it's, it's not as much as obviously the normal church of things, but there are the essential stuff that's happening, like the, the Children's Church Sunday, Sunday morning videos. We're doing kind of a younger kids one and older kids one. Um, I'm still very new at it, so I'm learning how to do um, everything, actually trying to make it some sort of interactive and, um, you know, keeps up sort of attention to the kids. But um, for the future of, of that, um, uh, from now up until the end of, of June, I'm going to be recording, trying to record twice, or even maybe three times 
as many um, sort of lessons. But we do have um, some people that are willing to to kind of take on um, doing some of these lessons for the future. Um, so it's almost on a kind of a once a month basis, basis, which is almost kind of five videos that someone would do, you know, um, in the in the time um, that uh, until sort of church resumes. So, the, so that there is some sort of content for the children on a Sunday morning in terms of children's church while their parents are attending church or um, at the moment it's happening before and after church. Um, so that's that. Uh, what we've also been doing, um, which is something called Family Faith Night, and um, it, which is kind of a, a time for parents to kind of come together. And it's, it's, it's up on our Facebook and also on, um, on our website where parents can kind of access it. And it's almost like a mini children's church lesson. Um, where the family to the, together can read a story, do a lesson, do an activity, um, and which is which is quite nice. And uh, so that's been happening. And um, I just want to see in my notes where else. Yeah, we've also had some of our uh, our volunteers, our children's church volunteers, um, phone um, a lot of our kids through through their parents, and if they can't get a hold of them, we send them sort of video video uh, video messages. Um, which has been really, really nice. Um, and it's just uh, something just to reiterate, um, Ian said, I think a while ago, that um, just that personal connection to to someone, um, especially kind of from a church side, actually goes a long way. Um, and the kids really, you know, they really enjoy it. And I know that the parents also kind of share their, um, their thanks to, to, to us doing that. So whenever you do phone someone, don't take it for granted. Um, it actually does go a long way. But um, yeah, so there's, there's that. So the future of children's ministry, as Ian said, um, they're not gonna replace um, me at the moment. So there are volunteers that are going to be making these videos up until kind of church resumes. Um, and yeah, that's, um, that's what I can think of at the moment. Is there any questions or comments? Questions, comments, or suggestions? Suggestions are great, really they are, because we're all new in this <laughs> this area of lockdown. Okay, if there's nothing, then we'll move on. Um, Josh, thanks to you and your team of volunteers for the great work they're doing. Right, now we'll move on to pastoral care. Thanks, Lel. Lael, you're very soft. Um, can you move closer to the mic, perhaps? Is that a little bit better? It's a little bit better. Um, it's not perfect, but okay. I think I think people will hear if they turn up the volume. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, in pastoral care, we've started a prayer group where the prayer needs are posted onto the West Cell WhatsApp. Um, all people... Um, there is directly with me. I then post onto the WhatsApp prayer group, which consists of 11 prayer partners, and then the people the prayer needs are prayed for. And um, we're still doing normal pastoral calls, um, but we've added extra caring calls. Um, I've got a database, and I take about 10 to 15 people off the database, which I try to call every day and find out how they're coping under lockdown, if they're receiving mails from Westview, or if they have any needs we can assist them with. Um, Shailene McLaren and Jeanette Berger have also been helping with calls where possible. Um, we also have an intercessory prayer letter where prayer needs are sent out via email to prayer partners. And at the moment, there are 16 prayer partners that pray for the intercessory prayer needs. Um, we have also have arranged volunteers to call our new members. Josh sent out a list to all the new, of new members who have joined in the last two years. And the volunteers have been calling the new members to find out how they're coping and how they're doing. Um, our pastoral care steward, Sean Smith, also called all the pastoral care volunteers to check in on them and see how they're all coping. Our hospital visitation, unfortunately, has stopped. They have tried once or twice to go and visit, but the hospitals are not letting the visitors in. So the people that are going to hospital, we're just trying to keep contact with them telephonically and with their families. Um, we've also done the food pack. We arranged a food pack at Menandi, and there was a group of 16 people that all went to Menandi to help with the food pack. We've um, made another group since, but Jen is just busy training people at the Tsehu for the new way of packing, and then we're liaising with Alida and Jen and Sipiwe to arrange more packing groups to go and pack food for those who need it. 
Thanks very much, Lael. Uh, an opportunity for questions or suggestions, comments? Right, we move on then to um, worship and communication. Nicola, you can just deal with both of those together, I think. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll start with communication. Uh, so with uh, worship moving off the premises, some of the avenues of communication have naturally sort of been frozen, such as um, Westby News, the posters on the premises and also bulletins. We're not producing bulletins at the moment. Um, but things such as Ian's e-letters, the website, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, they are still carrying on. And then we've also, as I'm sure you know, we started with WhatsApp as a form of communication, which is really, I think, been the most effective form of communication that Westview has had to date. Um, we've got 420 people who have signed up for the news. Um, and then, let me quickly check, 141 people have signed up for daily devotions. We decided to make these two different things that you would sign up for because some people um, might get word of it and would like the daily devotions, but not necessarily be interested in Westby News. Some people would like to be up to date with Westby News, but they're um, perhaps downloading the devotional booklet from our website, which is a fuller devotion, um, so they don't want the daily devotion. So we're allowing people to sign up for those separately. Um, we try, we're trying not to spam people, so we're trying to keep the, the news um, WhatsApp to uh, um, just one a day at the most. Yeah, but it's going well, I think, with the WhatsApp. And we've had good responses. Um, as far as wish, uh, should I pause for questions about communication? Why don't you just keep going, Nicola? We can take questions on both when you finish. Okay. Um, worship. So I'm sure you've noticed we've moved online. Um, we we uh, at first were able to film a bunch of um, worship services on the premises before lockdown happened. But then when lockdown was extended, we had to come up with other solutions. Um, it's been a challenging time, but also very exciting to get our teeth into new stuff and new ways of doing things. And yeah, it's, it's actually been a very exciting thing to be a part of. Um, a lot of different, I mean, worship comprises of basically everything that happens on a Sunday. So it includes the, the welcome teams, the bands, the flower ministry, the scripture readers. Um, there's seven different sort of subclusters. So, yeah, as Ian mentioned, so many people want to be involved and are already looking for ways to be involved in what we're doing at the moment, but that is also challenging. Um, so we, 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 we're continually trying to come up with new ways to get more people involved because we also appreciate the sense of community it creates in our worship services, the more people are involved. Um, yeah, but it's been exciting. The worship team has done so well. One of the other challenges is maybe that um, the skill set that we need to create the online services sits with a very few people. So there's a lot of pressure on those people. Data, um, getting videos back and forth has also been a challenge. Um, but we've, we've risen <laughs> above all the challenges. And yeah, it's, it's an exciting time to be part of the, you know, the Westview Worship Cluster. Okay, thanks, any Nicola. Questions? I'll pause there and ask if there's any questions, comments, or suggestions for Nicola. Perhaps if I could just ask for your assistance, those of you who are in business, um, and, I'm, and I don't want you to answer in this meeting because I don't want to get, get the meeting bogged down, but if you wouldn't mind just emailing or WhatsApping me or phoning me after tonight's meeting, there's been you know, it really would be a lot easier and the final product would be a lot more, um, final experience for the congregation would be a lot better if we could, if we could film in the sanctuary 
as we did for the services up until Easter Sunday. Um, and, but we're just not sure legally whether that would be permissible to be uh, pulling together a group of, of um, two or three staff plus three or four volunteers, I guess, at a time to film services at the sanctuary. Um, so if anybody is able to advise us on whether that would be legally permissible or not, um, if you could drop me a WhatsApp or an email or phone me after this meeting is over, I'd be grateful for your input on that. We've got to make a decision by tomorrow morning about what our plans are for Sunday the 17th of May um, so that we can start pulling them together. Okay, then we will Sorry. move on from... Sorry, Ian. Uh, yes, uh, Kurt, yeah. So, um, Nicola, I'd just like to suggest uh, as well that you get the sun guys involved as well to for the uh, to do a proper mix of the bands because um, during the services, I've noticed that there's some of the um, musicians on on aren't heard properly or the um, they're not um, synced properly or something to that effect. So to get us in more involved as well, to um, give you a, a better picture, a better sound for the bands. Okay, um, I have spoken to, so John van der Laar's been mixing the music at the moment, so it's not like we're just putting it together. There has been mixing, um, but I'll, I'll pass on your suggestion and see how we can get the sound guys involved. Yeah. Kurt, you'll know better to make a suggestion when a minister's around. Is your suggestion also an offer to assist? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So there you go. You heard that, Nicola. So you can discuss that as a possibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, I see Sue is commenting the same, the same comment there, Nicola. Okay. Um, right. Then we... Um, Anything else under worship or communications? Right, let's move on then to um, Kaluma Family Counseling. We'll hand over to Heidi now. Thank you, Ian, and good evening, everyone. Yes, Kaluma has been one of the essential service providers. Um, so although we are in lockdown, um, we are not in lockdown. We have been on standby at the police stations. We the victim friendly rooms and as from Monday we will be present at the police stations as well we have put our risk assessment plan together um, and have con had consultations with the police stations as well where some of them are also running on skeleton staff but it's slowly but surely coming more and more um, necessary that we are there because there are more and more people coming to the police stations, um, especially with the gender based violence that is starting to increase and people are really feeling the psychological effects of the lockdown. Um, what we've also been doing is we've been offering counselling online and via telephone, um, Zoom meeting or even um, WhatsApp or um, some people have chosen to go via Facebook private messaging. And then also where we very much involved with is still doing material assistance within the community. Um, and that includes clothing, blankets, and especially coming up into the winter season now with the, also the dry season. And just before lockdown where there were some shacks that have burnt down and people have been in need of um, essential um, items. But we also do, um, we had started with distributing some of the food parcels to the gender-based violence victims um, and to elderly people that have been identified within the community. But with the whole situation um, in Moiplas and in Levenhout Bosch, where it is very often a little bit volatile to go into there and the police have um, asked us uh, or suggested to us rather not for our own safety. And then we have resorted to issuing some food vouchers, um, which has actually worked very well um, through checkers, through the compu ticket. And that has also empowered the people themselves to go and buy the food that they needed. Um, and, and so far that has worked well. 
Um, we just can't extend that too big because we um, are waiting to see what the funding situation is from the Department of Social Development. Um, of course, that will also guide our services into the rest of the year. Um, of course, also what has happened now is that in some areas there are designated NGOs um, that are the only ones allowed to hand out food parcels, but uh, that is more in terms of the bigger um, feeding scheme um, that they are involved with. Then our AGM, which was due now on the 19th of May, we have postponed that. Um, that will be only done once we are in level one and where more people can gather together. Um, yes, and we are also at the Kaluma House office on a Monday, um, which has helped tremendously just um, organizing everything and coordinating everything, but it's also been helpful just to touch base with the what I'll call the management team with the social worker and the social auxiliary workers um, and getting everything organized and really in place. What we've also have done is um, partnered with a kinesiologist um, who has specially put together an affirmation app for gender-based violence and police stations. And we will now from Monday start using that and that will be silently played in the background at the police station and on the subconscious also um, work on helping with the stress levels that are there and also helping just to empower the people around there that come into contact with it because there have been studies done that has, has worked excellently and helped people actually to empower themselves and to affirm themselves and to get um, stronger within their relationships. So that's what Kuluma has been up to. And yes, um, before I forget, this is now ours. So if you can't see properly. We have our own branded masks. And Ian, it doesn't, um, what's it? You can still see through your glasses. <laughs> I don't know whether there's anything yeah. that J Jackie wants to add to it or any questions. Thanks, Heidi. I don't have anything else to add. Um, I just think it's an excellent idea with the um, subliminal um, background in the, in the police stations. I'm sure it will help a lot. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's new territory that we're exploring as well to, uh, and to see how we really can get to wider, um, because for example, in Erasmia, we're right next to the holding cell. So how that will impact on the um, convicts as well. Thanks, Thanks very Sean, much. Sue, for your comments. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. And um, yeah, strength to you and your team, Heidi. Please take the gratitude of the leaders meeting uh, to your staff and your volunteers for the, the, the wonderful work that they're doing through lockdown. Thank you very um, much. I will do that, definitely. Okay. Um, Lorne's asked a question about the, um, the food parcel distribution and coordination um, about the danger, the danger of double dipping if things are not coordinated. Would you like to respond? Can you see the message there, Heidi? Would you like to respond to that? Um, okay, we do not double dip from Westview, Loney, because Alida, myself, and um, also with Lyle, we actually check uh, first before that, and luckily um, our staff, when they go to Moy Plus um, and are also in contact with Lindiwe from the Czechu, they double check the clients as well, and it actually has been very interesting to see that um, when there is somebody pitching up the um, that is, uh, you know, being said, even, um, I don't know whether leaders who might share this, but sometimes we have seen that even one of the clients that we have has gone to the Czech as well, and it was quite interesting. Um, last week, I saw the guy in his wheelchair um, at the 
one of the circles, um, traffic circles here in Valanguetta in his wheelchair and we couldn't understand how did he get there from Hoyplas to the, this part of the area. So yeah, we need to be very aware of that. So um, thank you. Um, yeah, but we're really more concentrating on the gender-based violence victims and we make sure that they are really victims that are in need of food parcels lonely. I don't know whether that answered your um, question. We, we will never be able to get to everybody um, lonely. That is just totally out of our hands. But we're really also trying to coordinate with the CPF in both in the Moyplas area within our Vierabruch precinct, within Littleton and within Olivenhout Bosch, also to make sure that um, where they, um, and with the social crime officers, where they have identified needy people um, that we can reach with them and um, if necessary, refer them to the organizations that have been designated by government to provide more food parcels. Thank you, Heidi. Um, uh, then there's a question from Jackie. How much are the masks? Where can we get hold of them? Yeah, Jackie, that is a little bit of a contentious issue because we've really paid with them from the Department of Social Development's money. Um, but I have received them this afternoon. They are at our office. We paid 25 Rand for them, um, so we don't really want to make uh, lots of money because it is necessary for our people to wear those masks. Um, so it's not going to be a big scale that um, at this point in time that we, we don't want to go and compete with the health and safety people that are selling the masks out there. But we can always look at it if we do have a couple of spare ones um, that we can make them available. So just to be clear that the DSD has given, uh, Department of Social Development has given Kaluma, Kaluma money for PPE and it's, it's uh, for, their, uh, for their staff and volunteers. And so these masks have been ordered in, in uh, paid for by DSD money to supply um, Kaluma staff and volunteers with the PPE that they need. And um, uh, and so uh, it would be going against DSD uh, policy for Kaluma to then sell them on uh, because that's not what the money is given for. Okay, thanks uh, Heidi and keep up the wonderful work and uh, I know that you'll take our gratitude to your staff and volunteers. Then over to Alida from uh, Ditsejo. Good evening to everybody. Um, let me just get my video started, sorry. Um, I'm struggling tonight with, with, with my laptop. Um, good evening to everybody and I'm really, I, I, I need to start off by saying thank you to everybody. Um, I had so many calls and um, since the 25th of March, um, I cannot tell you how many um, donations in kind, um, questionations um, and from everybody. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, it's really a blessing for us at the Tsejo House. Um, I would like to start off um, by saying that all our school projects, um, the preschool, the after school, um, our um, Uh, all, all our school projects at this point in time has been stopped, so none of them is is continuing at the moment. Um, and and um, so we needed to, to start with some kind of feeding food parcel scheme in the community because most of our children cannot um, or didn't get more than one meal a day um, at at home or nothing. Um, and we've provided for them two meals per day. Um, and so we've started immediately with that. Um, and um, we have distributed up till today, 450 food parcels. Um, most of these food parcels has been donated by um, volunteers, um, by the Tsehu committee that uh, sent out uh, uh, letters and things like that. And then also, um, 
uh, congregation members, and we, we really want to say thank you. Um, what we do with the food parcels, and I think it's important, and I hear a couple of questions about the, the whole, um, how do you work around food parcels or food, food distribution? Um, what's happening at the moment is that we have, um, we've got permission from the Department of Social Development to distribute food parcels. So um, we do not have the same problem that some of the other organizations have. And I think one of the things is that, that, that happens is that people do not have permission. And then it goes into overdrive and all kinds of problems. Um, our things has been worked out. Um, we get the food in most of the food parcels in on a Tuesday and a Thursday, and then we will distribute either the Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, or Thursday afternoon and Friday morning. Um, we cannot do it every day. There's a lot of work that goes into, into this distribution. Um, we're very fortunate, and I just want to say that up till today, we've um, reached a target of about 140,000 rand that, that was donated in um, money. Um, that is not, uh, most of the food parcels that I was talking about that we have handed out has been donations. None of them has been, been paid for yet. Um, we are starting now to, with, with Jen, um, Reverend Jen from, from Manandi, uh, we're starting to, um, to see how we're going to pack our own food parcels. She was there this afternoon and, and we will continue with that. Um, so that is, an, that, that is one of the, the projects. With the children at the Tsecha House, um, they, they, they're okay and um, they're doing very well. Um, I try to chat with them at least twice a week just to see that they're all okay. Um, we're in contact with all our staff, um, thanks to volunteers. Um, uh, uh, they have given all our staff um, enough air time to so that we can kind of liaise with them and be in contact with them so I'm, I'm very grateful for that and then um the uh the other project um, that that's just and we've handed out the, the clothes and and the blankets today um we we we've received about 90 blankets and jerseys and baby um socks and all kinds of things that we found it out today because there was a great need for that and um the, the fourth project that we're busy with is um uh let me just see which one is the four um uh, it's the nappy project um we've received um up till this morning four thousand grand and we will start distributing nappies as well because there's a there's a great need not only for food but um, clothes for babies and newborn babies, and then also nappies and all kinds of things. So we, as we continue, uh, as we go on, we we need to change some of of the things. Um, I think this, in brief, a summary of of what we're busy with at at the Sega House. Um, we are on lockdown, um, so our staff. Um, uh, some of them, uh, because we had to continue with the, the, the food distribution, um, was on, on the plot most of the time, um, and we had permission for them to be there. Um, yeah, um, that's more or less what's going on. Um, we still do not want um, too many people from outside to come to the Tsegel House, and it's just for for safety precautions and also for health reasons that we do not want too many uh, people on 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 the pot at, at this point in time. So we will continue um, asking that people um, rather drop off at the drop off points that we have the food or whatever. Um, yeah. And in, lastly, but not the least, is um, with the open schools. Um, we have a meeting next week with open schools so that we can plan for when um, the schools reopen um, uh, so that uh, we can continue with our, our school project at, at the Tsegra. Any Thank questions? Any questions or suggestions, comments to our leader?
Thanks, Alida. And as I said to Kaluma, if you can please take the appreciation of the leaders meeting to your staff and volunteers for the wonderful work that they are doing in, in difficult circumstances. And to you for your leadership, we appreciate it. Alida, could I ask you just to respond to Harry's question at the beginning about whether the question about whether the Gauteng uh, uh, provincial government's attempt to coordinate uh, distribution of food parcels is impacting your food distribution plans at all? Um, no, not at all. Um, we, it had no impact on it. Um, uh, we continue with, with um, the target that we have set ourselves, um, but we're coordinating with them. Um, it, it's important. I've just yesterday, we've sent the list again to them to say this is the people um, that we distribute food parcels to, so that we make sure that we don't have the tickets. Um, it, it's very important. So um, it, we work together. There's other organizations as well, um, and, and we all um, will phone each other and make sure that, that, that we coordinate the, the, the project. Um, but there was no impact so far from, from, the, um, from the Gauteng department in terms of um, wanting to, to um, take control of it. Um, I think that, that uh, I have talked to somebody today who have said that I don't think that they will be able to do it on their own um, and I think they need to rethink um, the message that they sent out about the food distribution. Harry, does that answer your question? Ian, that was actually my question. Oh, sorry, Spokane. yes, Dion. Sorry. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, Harry, Harry's sitting in hospital. How could he have asked a question? Yeah. Sorry. Was, it's been a long uh, day. Th thanks. It's, thanks. It's yeah. been answered. Um, yeah. Okay. Much relief. Yeah. And well done to our team. Thank you, Dion. <laughs> and wonderful to hear that it's the best of both worlds in the sense that there is coordination happening, so there's no double dipping, but that the coordination is not hindering. Uh, the kind of entrepreneurial initiative that the non-profits and church sector, religious sector is taking. So that's fantastic. We move on to Westview College now, and um, neither Michael nor um, Brian, who's the Society Steward for Westview College, nor Cherry are able to be at tonight's meeting. And so I'd like to just read to you the WhatsApp that Michael sent for reporting, and I'll just read it as it is. Michael writes that the school is in the process of arranging um, for the school to be professionally sanitized. Michael's, I'm awaiting a quote. It will be a certified clean. It will include the Mark Hall in case we need to use it. Uh, COVID-19 is going to cost us a bomb. There is so much to be done. Masks, sanitizer, sanitizing, thermometers, class dividers, etc. We don't know how much, but it will be large. We have our support staff and our teachers being kit kitted out and trained for prevention of and awareness of COVID-19 over the next few weeks. Parents are jumpy. The DBE are so confused in their communication that no one really knows what to expect. For the past six weeks, we have been giving online lessons. We are running according to our timetable, but it is not like real teaching. Today, we passed a credit note to all the preschool parents, moving them from full day fees to half day fees. We have yet to deal with the primary school fees, although we have scrapped after care fees. All this is really affecting our bottom line in the budget. And as yet, we are not sure of parents' payments. I think that will become more clear next month. We have lost three learners due to financial problems. Currently, we are able to meet salaries. I've asked Avril to look into a few UIF possibilities, but it will not amount to much. Obviously, this is all unexpected. And so the proposed purchase of the neighboring property is going to have to go on hold. We cannot guarantee that we can meet the cost of that. We are in unknown territory right now, 
But up to now, I'm cautiously optimistic about the future. I'm very glad that we have completed the court payments. Nothing is owing there. Um, regards, Michael. So that's the feedback from Michael. If you've got any questions, uh, I may be able to answer them. And so you can fire away uh, any questions. Just to say that um, just before we went into lockdown, I did contact the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Retief, who owned the house that we were in the process of signing an offer to purchase on. And I explained to them that, you know, owing to the uncertainty around the church's income and the school's income going forward, we would have to put the offer to purchase on hold. And uh, they were obviously disappointed, but they also understood. And, um, and so, uh, so that's where we are at with the purchase of the property. So any questions relating either to the property in Bosch Safe Road or uh, Westview College? Right, we are um, at finance and admin, and so I'm going to hand over to Avril um, to just speak to finance and admin. Thanks, Avril. Thanks, Ian. Um, I'm going to keep it brief because I think that we've heard a lot about the other things. However, the admin is, is obviously the, the engine room of the church, as you said many times. So it is important that this group as leaders know what we're up to and how we're approaching the, the COVID situation. Um, in a nutshell, the first thing that I want to do is just to acknowledge how humbled we are by the faithful giving of this congregation that has enabled us at, at the end of April. Now, you've got March's financials um, that you would have received today or whenever you got them with the um, notification of this meeting. But you will notice um, that in March we had a good income. April wasn't quite as good a number, but it's still enough to keep us um, on the, the better side of the budget to the tune of just over 9,000 Rand for the year to date. So um, I just want to place on record, obviously, the, 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 the great attitude and just acknowledge that the folk of this church are still giving faithfully. We believe that it's largely due to the fact that um, so many people are working so hard to make it feel like church is still open for business, to, co to coin a phrase, and to make people feel um, that we're still connected to one another and so on. I'm not going to go into all of that. Um, in terms of the finance department, we are all working from home. Leander Bakang and myself are all business as usual, just in a slightly unusual way. We have, I think, come to grips with doing things by email as, as opposed to getting manual signatures and so on. We have noticed some changes and I'm, and I'm happy to say that most of them have been fairly easy for us to integrate. Um, we d we've not anticipated uh, things that we don't anticipate at this point that we can't carry on doing things as we're doing them for, for as long as what's required, um, thanks to technology. <laughs> On the notes of technology, um, ICT seems to be working really, really well. We haven't had much call to call us the IT guys and everything that they do for us is still managed remotely. Um, so yeah, gratitude for that. Uh, the database with relate, which relates to um, what CAKES is doing for us, we are any changes that come through through the people who are calling and through emails that come to info which just comes to me and so on we are obviously updating the database as and when but cakes has also embarked on a campaign to to continue what we were doing during when before the lockdown and that is to completely repopulate and update this database as we've been doing for the last several months um, and we believe that that is is moving forward um the other thing that i wanted to just briefly touch on is to say that um uh, we've we've had to think a little bit around the whole situation of, of um, our response to COVID and the law. So I'm going to be embarking on um, the exercise, as it were, um, with Ian's blessing, obviously, to make sure that we have the place workplace ready, employees ready. Um, the Department of Labor have been very clear that there are very strict rules and, and laws um, around people going back to work and what the premises needs to go through. Um, some of what Michael touched on about the school is absolutely relevant to the church as well. Sanitizing, um, risk assessments that Heidi spoke about, all of those things, we are going to have to do them before people can actually go back to work. Um, but we are, we are doing it. We are looking into what needs to be done and who needs to do it for us and all of those kinds of things. There, I would just ask that if any of the folk who are on this, this meeting tonight have um, access to, or perhaps themselves, 
our current uh, labor law or HR practitioners, please just drop me an email or a WhatsApp. I would appreciate any kind of suggestions or input that you, you may have for us or any context that you can put me into because obviously this is going to be a costly exercise and I'd like to, to shop around a little bit if possible, though I don't have a lot of time um, to make sure that the church gets value for, for whatever we, we spend. Uh, yeah, I think in the interest of brevity, that's where I'm going to leave it unless there are any questions. Okay, questions, oh, comments, you. suggestions? Thank you. Thank you, Avril. Um, so, um, we, we come now to the questions which were raised at the beginning of our meeting, and the one does relate to finances. So, um, can you see the questions on your screen now? Um, and yeah, we do. Yeah, so the first question has been covered. Um, the third question has been covered. Just to talk about the second question. So, just to explain that because of the faithfulness of the congregation, and we are actually on budget for the year to date as far as uh, congregational tithes and offerings go, uh, we have been able to continue to uh, meet our assessment expenses and our HR expenses. The only uh, staff members who have taken a bit of a knock is our ground staff who normally are paid overtime for the car guard work that they do on Sundays and, uh, and Saturdays sometimes in evenings. So obviously they've lost the overtime portion, uh, but they, they are getting their basic salary in full. Um, and so we have a finance uh, committee meeting taking place next week, and the finance committee will be applying their minds to a strategy going forward. Uh, and I guess doing some scenario planning from a financial point of view. So that's where we are at as far as the Westview Society goes. And of course, there will be some savings. Um, you know, electricity bill will go down, water bill will go down, printing costs uh, on, 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 will go down. Um, but then there are other expenses that have gone up. So we are helping some of the people who are phoning with extra airtime. Um, and, and uh, there, you know, uh, subscriptions to Zoom and so on. There are a few additional expenses relating to shutdown. Um, then as far as the circuit uh, and the district synod go, um, ministers have been requested to, uh, to volunteer. And so for many, for some ministers, their traveling expenses have gone down. And as ministers, we do receive a traveling allowance. And so ministers have been asked in, across the synod uh, to volunteer a reduction in their traveling, um, which will provide some relief to the local congregations in terms of traveling allowances paid. And so uh, that has been left up to each minister to do an assessment of what impact lockdown has had on their traveling expenses and to consider uh, passing on that saving to local societies. Uh, there has also been a Synod um, COVID relief fund launched and ministers have been asked to lead by example in making a financial contribution towards that Synod COVID relief fund. And, um, but that's not really an HR saving. As far as the connection goes, um, there are constant conversations taking place um, about the financial impact on uh, the entire Methodist connection. But I don't think any firm decisions have been taken at this stage. So Piwe, you might want to add something here. Jeff, I know you serve on the Synod Finance Committee. You may know more than I do as well. Um, but as my understanding is that at a connectional level, um, you know, there have been many conversations, but we don't know enough yet about the impact and we haven't yet reached the stage of making any firm decisions relating to assessments. 
Uh, the other thing I forgot to say about Westview HR spend is that the 1st of April is normally the increase, the annual increment date for our church staff. And, uh, and so uh, staff increases were put on hold on the 1st of April. And so staff did not get their annual increment on the 1st of April. Um, so Piwe, um, Avril, uh, and Jeff, is there anything that you would want to add to, uh, to what I've shared in response to Jeff's question? And Jeff, perhaps uh, just to check whether I have answered your question fully or, or not. Uh, thanks, Ian. Um, yeah, I think that is a you know a, a good answer to the question. My, my understanding is that you know a number of this stuff is still being talked about. Um, it, it comes in bits and pieces, not you know unsurprisingly, in that it is a moving target all the time. Um, I, I think you know as a leaders meeting we would be foolish not to take note of wider um, predictions um, you know when the SARS commissioner says we're going to lose you know perhaps between you know 5 and 15 up to 20 percent revenue as a country um, you know that that is going to follow through to societies um, and the Methodist Church uh, in, in general and I know that there's a lot of effort trying to go in to figure out what it is um, you know, my, my challenge is always, are we going to be ready to respond? I, I think I'm encouraged by, you know, the fact that the school is really recognizing that, you know, some of the um, challenges that they are facing are not going to be resolved early. But that means that by the end of 2020, that's not the end of this COVID financial crisis. Um, it means that, you know, we're going to have to be responding um as it goes when it comes um because if anybody can say this is what's going to happen i think they're smoking a pipe we, we really really don't and i don't think we must be surprised by any curveballs that will come i'm convinced that they will um and you know we just need to embrace one another in love as we navigate um you know what it is we do with what we have and you know right at the moment i think westview is one of the societies that is probably in a very um favorable position around the connection and i think we must be cognizant of the fact that we are uh, in that position and and look a bit wider I, some of the comments that i have read and seen are a bit dis disconcerting that we want to become uh, I, I, I don't say this is an official position. I think, you know, that in the polling, there's been a lot of, um, we want to become isolationist, uh, which is, in my opinion, against the Methodist ethos. Um, and so, you know, as, as we journey through here, um, I, I, you know, we, we're going to have to be cognizant of some of those challenges. And I think at some point, the, you know, the connection and the bishop um, the presiding bishop will have to, you know, uh, come out and, and give us some guidance. And I, I, I think it's going to change pretty much as we are from Cyril every, every week, we're going to hear, you know, a change in, in financial uh, scenarios uh, going forward. So we'll just have to hold on and enjoy the ride, I think. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for for those comments, uh, I, I think in terms of the the response from MCO, uh, one of the thing, one of the reasons why that response has been frustrating for many people is that somehow uh, we all expect some sort of relief to come from the MCO, and the reality of our funding model is that uh, the circuit as well as the MCO. Uh, they don't really have uh, too, too much reserves uh, to spare. They, they receive monies from societies and circuits, uh, and then they, they spend that money. So the, the reserves that we have in terms of MCO, I think when they send that thing out, they said if they were to use those reserves, those reserves would probably just cover 
three months uh, of our whole uh, connectional expenses. And then after three months, the connection would be in trouble. And then when it comes to district as well, the district does not have reserves uh, as well. Uh, the district receives assessments from us, which is why then part of the things that the, dis the district is calling is for circuits to donate a, a portion of their income to the district account. And the same applies to the circuit as well, that when we look at our circuit account, that account is just filled by monies that come from societies. And so to be honest, there are no reserves anyway, uh, which is why then in terms of responses, uh, if we were to expect responses from top to down, we will be frustrated because there, there isn't much that might come there because of our funding model. But I like what Jeff has raised to say that as a society, we need then to constantly look at ourselves and try to think ahead in terms of uh, what is it that we can do from our side uh, to try to meet uh, these challenges that are currently facing us. And so tomorrow we have a second exact meeting where as a second we will be talking also about finances and trying to find other ways. And then on Friday again, we have a synod executive meeting, uh, which will also continue uh, to reflect on the current situation. Uh, but I think as a society, we also need to really begin to be proactive in terms of thinking uh, about, about the situation and finding ways to manage it uh, as a local society. Thanks for that wisdom and for that information, um, Sapiwe and Jeff. I think this is just a very important conversation and it's important that you as a leaders meeting just understand some of the conversations uh, that the broader denomination is facing, both at synod or district level and also at the connectional level. Okay, anything else under finance, sorry, under general questions? Okay, so just to say that our next, um, according to our year planner, the next date for a leaders meeting is Thursday the 27th of August. So that is uh, uh, three months time. And, um, uh, and uh, yeah, for the time being, that will be our next um, meeting. Then um, for those of you, just to let you know that the, um, date of the quarterly meeting has shifted. Um, I don't have the date on hand, but you will be notified of the date of the circuit quarterly meeting, which will also be a Zoom meeting. And, uh, and so watch, watch the space for uh, the circuit um, quarterly meeting. Okay, are we ready to close? The 8th, the, the 8th of? The 28th of 28th. May. 28th of May. Thank you for that, Sapiwe. 28th of May is the date for our um, circuit quarterly meeting. Okay. Um, right. Are we ready to close our meeting? So, friends, thank you. I just want to um, honor each and every one of you for your commitment to Westview's uh, witness and life. Um, for your prayers, uh, we feel them, and, uh, and for the trust and the hope and the unity which I, I feel in this meeting. Uh, I really do feel that there has been this incredible unity uh, through this time uh, at Westview. And, um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm very, very grateful uh, for that. Um, we're going to close in prayer now, and um, me uh, getting Dion and Harry mixed up, perhaps just prudent to share with you as a congregation that Harry did uh, fall over the weekend and uh, broke his hip. Uh, he is in hospital, uh, will be having surgery in about a week's time, and so in our closing prayer, we will just remember Harry and Miranda uh, in, in, in prayer. 
um, at this uh, at this time. Um, and then we also want to pray for a, a member of this um, meeting. Um, she is a Sunday school teacher, Sharice, uh, Sharice Fryer, and um, Sharice's um, father passed away. Um, we will be having a memorial service. Superior will be leading a memorial service at the Westview, uh, on the Westview campus um, on, uh, on uh, next week, Wednesday or Thursday. And so we just want to pray for Sharice and, um, and uh, her family at this time. So let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you are a God who is faithful. We thank you that we feel the nearness of your spirit with us and in us as we journey through this time. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom, for your guidance. Uh, thank you for your love, which binds us together in unity. Thank you for all the many ways in which Westview continues to be a place where life change happens that we have heard about tonight. Thank you for your provision for our finances to date. Lord, we just want to pray for your healing touch upon Harry. Uh, we pray for your comforting uh, presence with Sharice and her family. And Lord, for all others in our congregation who are facing sadness and stress and anxiety, um, uncertainty about their future, we hold them before you and uh, just pray that, uh, that we would be a community that is your hands and your feet, your heart to people at this time. And we pray all of this in the name and spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to ask that um, we... Uh, that we if you if you are able to switch on your video if you're willing to do that now if you're not already in your pajamas uh, and uh, we're just going to all hold up our hands and um, you can all stay on mute but i won't be on mute and let's just speak the benediction so you can speak the benediction we won't all uh, hear it because otherwise we'll get feedback but let's just bless each other with the benediction as we receive it thanks josh Amen. Okay, now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in, go in peace, friends, and uh, thank you so much for your presence in our meeting. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a good Bye, sleep. Everybody. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Just to mention, guys, Jeff had the a says good night. <laughs> <laughs> There's the parrot. Bye, parrot. <laughs> They're the holiest parrot I know, eh? Got the holiest helm yet, too. Bye, Ian. Bye, Valoni. Love to Mandu. It sounds like she's working hard, eh? Yeah, she's, she's been in meetings since uh, 10 this morning. Wow. Wow. Meeting and is after she, meeting after meeting. Is she working from home? Yes, from home. She's just next door. Oh, okay. Well, give her my <laughs> greetings, eh? Okay. Will okay. do. Will do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. Uh, bye, bye, Doug and uh, Mill, and bye, Isme and uh, and Nick. Go well. Goodbye to you too, Ian. Okay. <laughs>